In Dutch and British Guiana in South America lie vast and rich deposits of aluminum ore. In this hemisphere are the bauxite mines from which come three quarters of all the ore we use for United States production of aluminum. Without bauxite, we have no aluminum. Without aluminum, we have no wings. Without wings, we have no defense. Out of the clamshell buckets, over conveyors to growing storage piles, the bauxite flows. Most abundant of all metallic elements in the Earth's crust, yet never is aluminum found in pure metallic form. And so, we must break the bauxite down. When the bauxite has been ground to the proper fineness, it is prepared for mixing in chemical solution. At regular intervals, the operator weighs charges of bauxite and lime into which a stream of caustic soda liquor is carried. Process after process at high temperatures removes impurities and speeds the chemical changes. Red mud is washed away and the liquor flows on beneath through filter presses and coolers until eventually it is precipitated in great tanks five stories high. In these giant kettles and cauldrons, chemical solutions are working slowly to develop those qualities and properties which have helped make aluminum the outstanding 20th century metal. Finally, these long rotating kills heat the liquid to white hot temperatures to remove the water. As it dries into a fine white powder and is cooled, it has reached the end of the first stage of production. Here is alumina, ready to be conveyed or shipped to the pot mills. To change the powder alumina into the metal aluminum, the magic of electricity must be applied in the furnace. Millions of kilowatt hours are consumed. In this second stage of production, the vital necessity is cheap electricity in enormous quantities. Thus we find plants must be located close to the great hydroelectric developments of the nation. Here in one plant alone is a new rolling mill under construction, more than 2,000 feet in length, and itself only a part of a larger structure. From such a mill as this will come the rolled sheets worn by great pressure to thicknesses measured in thousands of an inch. In all its various forms, aluminum comes out of the northwest and southeast and northeast and midwest and far west to supply the aircraft plants of America. Because we are building not dozens, but thousands and tens of thousands of airplanes, we are facing a shortage of aluminum. Nearly three-fourths of the total weight of an airplane is aluminum or aluminum alloy. Ours is a gigantic task. In 1939, we put 40 million pounds of aluminum into a military aircraft. Next year, we must put into aircraft and other military uses an estimated billion and a half pounds.